Corporate Finance Excel Practice Problem. In this presentation, we're going to work a practice problem in Excel related to the calculation of return on equity and other ratios. We're going to be comparing two companies so we can compare and contrast the data from two companies. Get ready. It's time to take your chance with Corporate Finance. Here we are in Excel. We have our information on the left-hand side. We're going to put that into the blue area into our worksheet on the right-hand side. So the information is going to include two different company data, A and B, so we could do some comparison between the two. We have the net income, sales, total assets, total debt, stockholders, equity. And then we're going to calculate the return on stockholders' equity. And then we'll calculate the net income to sales, net income to total assets, sales to total assets, and debt to total assets. So let's calculate up top. We got the return on stockholders equity, which you will recall is the net income bottom line of the income statement. We're going to be picking up the two numbers here for A and B, the 40,200 and the 174,000. Notice those, of course, very different net incomes from two different companies. We can't really compare the bottom line number, but we can compare ratios. So then we're going to take the stockholders equity. So we'll pick up then the stockholders equity for a this is going to be a balance sheet item once again we're comparing an income statement item to a balance sheet item so be aware that depending on on who's asking you or what the the problem is saying or asking for you might have that average on the asset side because you're comparing something that has a time frame beginning and an end to a point in time so you might try to kind of pick a number that's going to be representative of the balance sheet at a given any given point in time over that range which could be an average which would most likely be an under most if it was like a textbook scenario the the beginning balance plus the ending balance or last year's balance ending balance which would be this year's beginning plus the ending balance divided by two so we're, we're going to take the stockholders equity given here the 291 and the stockholders equity here of the 524 noting again they're substantially different given the fact that we have two different companies we can't really compare those two uh, using just simply the dollar amount for the most part so then we're going to have the return on the stockholders equity return on equity being equal to we're going to be taking the net income divided by the stockholders equity let's format this now i'm going to go to the home tab numbers group make that a percent we can add a couple decimals once again we have rounding that we have to contend with so just be aware of that we're going to be rounding it to the 13.81 percent this is going to be equal to the 174 divided by the 524 let's uh, format that this time by using the format painter go into the home tab clipboard the format painter and then clicking on this item will we'll paint brush it just the formatting for us and then we're going to then underline it. We'll select these top two, home tab, font. We'll underline this, and there we have it. So now, once again, we can't really compare the numbers uh, as easily, but we could say, okay, what's the return on the stockholder's equity? What's the net income compared to the stockholder's equity, which you'll recall is assets minus liabilities. In other words, the accounting equation equaling is assets. Uh, we could rewrite it, assets minus liabilities equals equity equity then being like the book value uh, of the company or the amount of the um, the assets equal this should be assets equal liabilities plus equity which we can rewrite as assets minus liabilities uh, equals equity so equity is kind of like the book value uh, of the company or in other words it's the amount of assets that the owners have basically uh, claim to as opposed to third party individuals. So we're taking the income and comparing it to that amount to the equity amount. And we can compare that on the on these two companies now and that could give us some relevant data. We're saying we're comparing equity then to the return the net income the income statement performance statement. And we have uh, the 13.81 as compared to the 33.21 percent. Obviously, we want the net income compared to equity. We want the return, in essence, on the equity to be higher. So the 33.21 would then be the uh, preferential number in this comparison. And then once you break that down, you could, once you start to benchmark, you can say, okay, well, why is that? Is that is that because there's more financing going on in one company than the other? Assets equal liabilities plus equity. Are the liabilities, you know, a higher portion of the asset claim than the equity? Or is there basically a difference going on in terms of... Uh, the net income, the efficiency of the of the net income and the efficiency of, of the use of the resources of the company. So you can start to break that down 
in more detail. So let's do that a little bit. We're going to say, okay, now let's do some other calculations, net income compared to sales. This is going to be a performance type of analysis. So we'll take the net income bottom line number. We're going to be comparing that to the uh, sales line. Net income to sales is being the profit margin. And that's going to be, let's call it that profit margin. Let's call it that up here. Profit margin is going to be the net income is the 40 and this is going to be the uh, 174 and we're going to divide that by we'll divide this by the sales so we're going to pick up the sales once again this large chain large difference in the sales volume and uh, and the net income so we're going to then divide this out the 40,200 divided by the sales let's make that a percent go into the home tab numbers making it a percent increasing the decimals will uh, then do that over here. This equals the net income divided by the sales. And we can make that a percent by using the format paintbrush, home tab, clipboard, format painter. And then I'm just going to click on this sale. It'll transfer it over. We're going to then put the underline home tab font and put the underline here. So now we're looking at the, at the net income bottom line and comparing it uh, to the sales. So in other, in other words, the uh, company A is keeping uh, 11, 11 cents about 11.32 cents on every dollar where company B is keeping uh, 8.23 cents. So company on every dollar. So company A is looking better on the profit margin, even though they're looking worse when comparing, when taking a look at the return on the stockholders equity. So then we're starting to lean towards, well, maybe this is a debt kind of issue. Maybe the, the liability is the thing that's making this worse up top. So let's keep working. Now we're going to compare the net income to total assets. So we'll take the net income here. Uh, once again, net income, income statement, bottom line number, comparing it to the total assets number. That's going to be a balance sheet number. So and, and when you compare the net income to the total assets, which you could say is going to be the return on assets. And let's actually label that here return on assets so we can recognize that return on uh say return on assets and then we're going to pick up the net income which is going to be the net income and we'll pick up the total assets so total assets uh remembering that total assets you're comparing an income account uh to a balance sheet account and therefore the balance sheet account depending on where you're working with could have that average again average beginning and ending divided by two so we're given the asset account here so we're just going to pick up the asset account so then we're going to be saying the net income over here divided by the total assets so total assets let's go ahead and divide this out this will be equal to the 40,002 divided by the uh by the uh, 478 and I think I got the wrong net income for B net income should be the 174 divided by the 990 okay let's format this zero I'm going to go to the home tab numbers percent we'll add a couple decimals let's now do that over here this is going to be equal to the 174 divided by the uh, total assets let's format paintbrush it now go into the home tab clipboard paintbrush and then we'll paintbrush it over here. I'm going to underline these two, home tab, font, and do the underline there. So return on the assets, that's going to be the income return on the assets. We would like that to be a higher number typically, right? So now you're saying the return on assets is much lower for uh, for A than B. So B is, B is looking better. And so now we're thinking, okay, well, the profit margin was higher for A than for b so meaning for every dollar of sales a is getting more of that dollar getting the 11 cents versus the eight cents about uh, but it looks like the return on assets is better for b which could mean that their sales volume the number of units that they're selling if they you if they sell units they're making more sales in general so they're turning they're they're making more sales even though their profit margin is is lower is what that could be telling us then we're going to be taking a look at sales compared to the total assets. So let's take a look at sales. Uh, sales compared to total assets. So sales to total assets. 
which we can also call the total the asset turnover so asset turnover and then note that the asset turnover once again we're comparing something on the income statements to something that's on the balance sheet so the the denominator you could think of this ratio as being having something that will be kind of like a an average beginning and end divided by two so we're going to take the the total assets here so we're going to say all right the sales sales we're going to pick up here divided by the total assets the total assets and then we'll say sales here divided by the uh, total assets <clears throat> and then we'll divide that out this is going to be equal to the 355 divided by the uh, 478 let's add some decimals here so we're going to go up to the home tab we're going to go to the numbers group we're going to add decimals this is usually represented in times so how efficiently the, the assets turn over, how efficiently we're using our assets in order to generate the goal of the company, revenue generation. So why do we have assets? Why do we have the assets? In order to help generate revenue. So we're trying to measure how efficiently we're using those assets. So then we're going to do the same thing over here. This is going to be equal to this number, divided, sales divided by the total assets. Let's then format paint by clicking on this cell, go into the home tab, and then clipboard format painter, and then clicking on B. So now we have uh, the 0.74 and the 2.14. So if we look at, at the comparison of the assets, how well we are using assets, the larger number is going to be the better uh, number typically here. So the 2.14 means that company B is using their assets much more efficiently than uh, company A. So, so although, again, company A has a higher profit margin, they have uh it looks like they have less efficiency with their sales they're not making the sales are not making as good use of their assets they're not having as high of a uh asset turnover then let's take a look at the debt to asset ratio so we're going to say all right the debt that we have we're going to say is going to be the liabilities so we're going to say debt is going to be equal to the 188 this is going to be a liability on the balance sheet we're talking debt divided by the assets what we have this is going to be the total assets so we're going to be saying that that is going to be the 478 and this will be equal to then the 990 and this is going to give us the let's say debt to total assets ratio which will be equal to the debt divided by the total assets. I'll make that then a percent. We're going to go home tab, numbers group, percent. Increase the decimals. I'm going to do that over here. Equals uh, the total debt divided by the total assets. I'll use the format painter, clicking on the percentage item, home tab, uh, then the clipboard, the format painter, then clicking back over here to get uh, the 4838. So. A, when you compare the debt, when you're, you're thinking about our accounting equation, assets equal liabilities plus equity, we're thinking about how much claim does the liability have to those assets, third parties compared to equity. And if you think, if so, if you think about this, the debt, the liabilities for A uh, has a lower claim to the equity than for B. So when you think, when you're thinking about this breakout in terms of assets equal liabilities plus equity, what you know who has claim to those assets are they the liabilities or equity we would like equity to have the bigger breakout right and and in this case uh, it looks like uh, the debt so the debt to equity would be bad we would want the debt to equity to be to be lower so a has a lower debt to equity ratio so note that using these we could start to paint a picture we could start to kind of think through this with these different ratios with these comparisons we could say Looking at the return on stockholders equity, we're looking at the comparison of how much the equity has claimed to basically the assets, uh, assets of the company. Notice we're doing this with two largely different uh, dollar amounts with net income and stockholders equity. We have a higher return for B uh, than A. So B is looking better in terms of the return on stockholders equity. We would want that to be higher. If we look at the profit margin, looking at the percent uh, sales, we're going to say the profit margin when we're comparing the bottom line to the top line, where it looks like A is coming away with 11 cents about per dollar, whereas B is only getting uh, one cent, I mean, eight cents per dollar sales. So in that case, A is looking better because they have a higher profit margin. But note there's often a trade-off between the profit margin 
and the higher profit margin, how much you're keeping from every dollar sale and the volume of sales that you have. You got to balance between those two items. Then we have the return on, on return on assets, which is going to be the net income bottom line divided by uh, the assets. So what's going to be the return on the assets we have, the assets that we have are there to help us generate revenue or to generate basically the, the return in this case, the net income. And so we would want this number to be higher. And we could see that B has a larger return on the assets, meaning they're, it looks like they're applying their assets more efficiently. That might be the case. It might be the case that they have a higher, you know, uh, sale, you know, they got, they're selling more in relation to the, to the assets that they have in place. Then the assets turnover, now comparing the top line of the income statement, performance statement to the total assets. So the, the assets kind of like what we have in order to help to generate that revenue. And once again, we want to turn that we want this to be a higher number because we want to, that would mean more efficient use of the assets. We have 2.14, which is substantially higher for B than A, which would indicate that they're using their assets more efficiently and being able to possibly uh, turn them over more efficiently and therefore uh, possibly have higher uh, sales volumes, even though their profit margin is lower. Then we'll take a look at the debt compared to uh, the assets, which is kind of which can tell us a little bit about how much, you know, financing they have. In other words, if we think about the accounting equation, here's their assets, how much of them assets are claimed by the debt or the liabilities, debt and liabilities, how much of it is for equity. So we would like the debt. So in this case, it looks like A is better here because they have uh, less debt as compared to the, the total assets than B. And if you think about that from the relationship up top, notice you have the return on stockholders equity, which is equal, which is assets equal liabilities plus equity, liability and equity representing who has claim basically to the assets. So when you're thinking about this, you're saying okay, A is a lot lower than B here, but you also have to consider what the debt equity relationship is so in in other words assets equal liabilities plus equity if there's a lot if there's more leverage in the company if the liabilities are higher then the equity you know will be a relatively lower number and therefore when you're comparing the liabilities to equity that'll benefit the return on stockholders equity calculation so when you're so when you're considering this calculation then you gotta say okay there's a substantial difference here is it is part of that difference due to the liabilities that have have changed and if that's the case then you got to see you know whether that's a concern how much leverage would be a concern in terms of uh of the financing and how much of that is an impact and what's going to be uh the the what's going to be the implications of that